the Volkswagen Touareg. Now, I've always felt a little bit sorry for this car because its more glamorous cousins from Bentley, Audi, Porsche and Lamborghini have always hogged the limelight. This has always drawn the short straw. But for 2023, Volkswagen has added some much needed sparkle to its flagship SUV. I don't want to make you feel old, but it was over 20 years ago since VW launched the Touareg. It raised a few eyebrows at the time due to its odd sounding name and even odder looks, but VW sold a whopping 450,000 of the first generation car in nine years. The Touareg also came at a time when VW seemingly went a bit mad. There was the bonkers Phaeton limousine, a supercar concept and you could buy the Touareg with a V10 diesel or a W12 petrol if you really wanted to. When the Touareg launched in the early noughties, the premium SUV segment wasn't all that big, but now it's absolutely huge, not least with the Touareg sisters such as the Audi Q7 and Porsche Cayenne being top sellers. To give its largest SUV a bit of a fighting chance, Volkswagen has tweaked the styling. At the front end, there's a full width light bar and it gets VW's latest matrix LED headlights, which use over 38,000 LEDs to illuminate the road. There are new rear lights and another LED light bar, but also a love it or hate it illuminated VW badge. I remember first seeing this interior when this third generation car first launched in 2018 and the shock value was huge and even now, five years later, it still shocks and that's mostly because of this absolutely massive screen, this 15 inch touch screen. Now for 2023 all cars get it and the thing that shocks me the most is it's not like stuck on like an iPad style like you might find in some rival products. Here is embedded within the dashboard and the dashboard looks like it's stretched itself to fit the screen in. Now for 2023, VW's updated the uh, infotainment system, the software, it seems to work a lot better. The graphics are a lot crisper and it just looks a little bit more modern. Aside from that, VW's also added a new steering wheel. It looks a lot more premium than the previous version. And to uh, save your knees knocking against some hard plastic, they've added some extra padding to the center console. But aside from that, this interior still looks super, super modern and cutting edge. Of course, nothing has changed in the back, so it's still a five-seater with plenty of room for backseat passengers and the rear bench can slide backwards and forwards. The boot is enormous and if you have air suspension fitted, you can lower the car to aid access. With all the seats down, there's a huge 1800 litres of space back there. And if you want a tow bar, there's an electrically deployable one for £1200 and it comes with clever trailer assist. This system sees the car taking care of reversing and all the driver has to do is to control the steering by using the electric mirror knob. Autumn in the United Kingdom, isn't it a wonderful place? Sunny one minute, absolutely pelting down the next. So I do apologise if some of the shots in this video don't quite match up but please do stick with me. So the Touareg then, what's it like to drive? Well firstly like I've already said Volkswagen has changed the styling a little bit and they've added some new tech including a very clever remote park assist which allows you to park the car just by using your smartphone. There's also trailer assist which is very handy if you are regularly towing and you need a bit of assistance when reversing your trailer or your caravan and let's not forget the Touareg has long been a caravaner's favourite so that piece of tech will be very welcome and I'm saying that with my uh, tow car of the year judges hat on. But anyway, aside from all of that, the way the Touareg dries, well, it's pretty much identical 
to the pre-facelift. First of all, you sit very low down in the Touareg. A lot of SUVs of this size, like the uh, Land Rover Discovery, for example, you tend to sit up very high and you can lord it over other motorists. But in the Touareg, you seem to sit very low down, even though you clearly aren't, you do have to climb up to get into the Touareg. Because of how high the dashboard is, how high the centre console is, how high the doors are, you feel very cocooned. It feels kind of sporty, dare I say. And all of that means you feel as though you're sitting in the car. You're not sort of perched on top, you're sitting in it. And that always just feels a lot nicer, doesn't it? Now these screens absolutely dominate things in this car. Um, I've already said it, I know, but when you're driving, it just means things are so easy to read because everything's absolutely massive. The thing I don't like about this screen though is that all the controls are well, you've got to use that screen to control everything. So there are no actual physical knobs and dials to control the air conditioning, like you might find in a lot of Volkswagens. Here, everything is through this touchscreen. Now, in the previous Touareg, the entry-level cars had a much smaller nine-inch screen with some physical buttons. It made the dashboard look a little bit silly because the design was still massive and you had this tiny screen, but it did actually have physical buttons. Here, like I say, all cars have now got this screen and you've got to control everything through it. And it's just a bit difficult at times. I mean, I do have to take my eyes off the road to actually control the heating. That aside though, that's probably the only real grievance I have because the Touareg drives really nicely. Um, for the best possible ride, you're going to want air suspension and it just glides along the road, even though we've got massive 22 inch wheels on this car this black edition um you would think there'd be a bit of thump a bit of sort of shudder when you hit an imperfection in the road but there isn't i mean it just really glides along and it feels very serene this car the steering actually offers quite a bit of feedback actually surprisingly so i mean there's very little numbness and there's very little uh, as soon as you turn the wheel the car turns. There's no kind of dead feeling in the steering whatsoever, which is really nice. Um, other things, the brake pedal feels really good. Um, and it's a very easy car to place on the road. It actually feels, even though this car is chuffing enormous, it feels quite agile, actually. The one thing that remains the same, which does sort of annoy me a little bit, is the gearbox. There's a bit of a lag before the car actually knocks down a couple of gears. Of course, you can cure this by putting it into sport mode, and then let's do the same. It's a little bit quicker, but you don't want to be driving around in sport mode all the time, do you? So the kick down is a bit slow in this gearbox. But aside from that, the gears do change very, very smoothly, almost imperceptibly. Under the bonnet, you'll find a 3-litre V6 petrol, now with mild hybrid technology, and a 3-litre V6 petrol plug-in hybrid, which is good for low tax, but its 31-mile EV range is disappointing, especially when the near-identical Porsche Cayenne hybrid manages 46. If you want power, then there's the Touareg R, which uses the same PHEV powertrain, but pushes out 456 brake horsepower. But under the bonnet of this test car, it's a diesel, a diesel. I mean, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm driving the devil because diesels, well, you just don't get them anymore, do you? But this is a lovely engine. It's a three litre V6. We've got the higher output here. It comes in two power outputs. We've got the higher one here, 285 horsepower. And it's just a great engine. And whilst diesels, I mean, you feel embarrassed to actually say you've got a diesel these days. But for a car like this, and particularly a car which is primarily designed to be comfortable on long journeys, it can do a lot of towing, good fuel economy, a diesel still makes an awful lot of sense. There is still a plug-in hybrid, but new for 2023, you don't have to go for the high performance R to take advantage of that plug-in hybrid. It's now available in a lesser trim level, the Elegant. So, if you are a company car driver and you want to sort of take advantage of the tax breaks that are on offer um, with a plug-in hybrid, you will probably be uh, interested in that version. But for most people, I think they're still going to go for the diesel. And it's a really, really lovely engine. This 3.0-litre V6 diesel 
has long been a great engine. Um, it's been used in a variety of VW Group products. Even though this engine is starting to get a little bit long in the tooth, you really wouldn't think it because it's spot on for this car. And this engine really is the, the gem of this car because it's just perfect. The Touareg is impressive off-road too. It's not as good as a Discovery, but with its four-wheel steering, adjustable air suspension and a myriad of driving modes, the Touareg waltzed this off-road course. And that's despite it not having a low-range gearbox, locking differentials or proper off-road tyres. So, the Touareg is smooth, laden with tech, nice to drive and be a passenger in. However, there is a but. Prices for the new Touareg start at just under £68,000. This black edition is £70,000 and so it should feel smooth, tech laden and nice to drive at that price. The Touareg is a great car, but sadly it doesn't stand out enough in the large premium SUV market.